morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed forecast update for February 17th, 2025. A lot to get through today, including a Coral Sea tropical low that is going to develop into a tropical cyclone sometime in the next two weeks. Rain still occurring across interior parts of Western Australia and across the tropical regions of Darwin and, and the Northern Territory. Showers and thunderstorms expected across southeast Queensland and into northeast New South Wales. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. But let's get stuck straight into things this morning with a look over in the Queensland area and the Coral Sea, we're going to get stuck straight into things with the development of a monsoon trough expected to occur over the coming couple of days north of the Cape York Peninsula and into the Coral Sea, which will spit out a weak low pressure system, which is expected to develop into a tropical low or even a fully fledged tropical cyclone over the next week or so. There's nothing to look at right now in terms of the now uh, and what is happening across North Queensland. It is a little bit warm here and there, but let's just jump straight into the forecast now and have a look at what is expected over the coming couple of days using the Eastman Bear forecast model, which in my opinion is certainly on the weaker side and certainly on the uh, doesn't really know what it's talking about side of the forecast models. However, with between other forecast models, there is still quite a lot of uncertainty. So let's just use the Eastman Bear forecast model first and take a look at what other forecast models are saying in just a few moments. Pushing the forecast forward to Thursday, we are expecting this low pressure system to develop along this broad monsoonal trough. Offshore from the Cape York Peninsula, I'm expecting the uh, tropical low to develop pretty much halfway between Cairns and Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea. I'm expecting this tropical low to then move further out to sea and wrap itself up quite slowly, but definitely uh, wrap itself up, that's for sure over the course of this coming weekend and then into very early next week, Monday and Tuesday, the 24th and 25th of February respectively. I'm expecting at this point this system to be approaching tropical cyclone status here well offshore from the Queensland coastline. In fact, it's going to be closer to the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu than it will be to Queensland itself. And you can see it does slowly get its act together, still continuing to intensify through the 26th and into the 27th of February as well, before it looks like a jog towards the south or even towards Queensland is expected. I would just like to say this without going any further further into the video that the forecast beyond about the 25th of February is very uncertain surrounding this system. So we've got about eight days of certainty here. We do know that a tropical low is going to form. There is also a good chance it becomes a tropical cyclone. But, you, but beyond that, whether the system slides over to New Caledonia and Vanuatu which is equally likely as the system sliding down towards Queensland, where it could make a landfall on the Queensland coastline in the 10 to 14 day period around sort of Mackay or Rockhampton. I say could very loosely at this time. It is a uh, certainly a system worth keeping an eye and if you live between camps right down towards the Sunshine Coast, I think this is now a system to certainly keep in the back of your head and certainly uh, it is now time to watch the forecast quite closely over the coming couple of days but at this time absolutely no need to panic, no need to start preparing. Panic buying, shopping, preparing for this tropical cyclone is completely unnecessary at this time and it's going to be unnecessary for about another week or so and mark my words, if this system and the forecast does turn for the worst in, uh, for Queensland, there is going to be a lot of notice about it. Now the forecast models are calling for this system to be, to be pretty slow moving in the southern areas of the uh, Coral Sea. Now what that normally means is they've got no idea where this system is going to be going and to be honest with the steering currents that the Coral Sea has normally tropical cyclones do get around there they've got a fast or a certain forward motion around the southern extremities of the Coral Sea this system doesn't which means that the forecast is telling me that there is a huge degree of uncertainty down here in what the track and the future of this system looks beyond about the 25th or the 26th of February. The Eastman Berth never takes this tropical cyclone up to a respectable intent in fact, it kind of maxes out on the 25th of February or the 26th of February. It's about a Category 1 strength tropical cyclone here, and it doesn't really get any stronger than that. In fact, it'll be a bit of a stretch to call this a Category 1 strength tropical cyclone. And in terms of impacts on the Queensland coastline, I think the most that can be expected right now is a couple of blustery showers into late this coming weekend, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, between kind of the 23rd and the 26th of February for the Whit Sundays. That's kind of the only impacts along the Queensland coastline that can be expected as a result of this Coral Sea tropical low its formation. Other forecast models are a little bit more aggressive with this system. I mean, you can see with the Axis G3 forecast model, it is calling for a proper tropical cyclone to develop sometime around the 23rd or the 24th of February, and it's calling for it to uh, develop quite quickly, and in fact, rapid intensification looks possible as it heads across towards New Caledonia and Vanuatu. You can see it following that same track that the East Blue Earth and also the GFS forecast has, which is kind of that uh, straight line kind of heading towards the east track before that southerly turn happens around the 24th or the 25th uh, of February. This 
This tropical cyclone will be respectable in terms of intensity, about category three, potentially up towards category four status, but it will be very far away from Queensland. And the eastern berth and the axis forecast have had this bias towards Vanuatu and New Caledonia in their previous forecasts over the last couple of days as well. So right now it is looking like a 50-50 split between the forecast models and the chances of this tropical cyclone being a stronger system across towards Vanuatu and New Caledonia, or being a more kind of Queensland rider in terms of the storm that's going to form closer towards Queensland. And the forecast model that is suggesting that right now is, of course, the GFS forecast model. And the GFS forecast model certainly is doing enough right now to cause some concern. I would just like to say this, if you're seeing a forecast that's using the GFS, just take it with a very heavy pinch of salt. Whilst the GFS is a very reliable forecast model, it can throw out some absolute uh, crazy unreliable scenarios and I think that this is a case here. Calling for, the, for this system to develop into a tropical cyclone around the 23rd of February in line with what the Axis G3 is calling for it but it's much closer to Queensland here and you can see rapid intensification through Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday Take this takes this system up to category 4 severe tropical cyclone status as it approaches the Sundays on the 27th and the 28th of February before a landfall on top of Rockhampton on the 1st of March. Now that would be a pretty serious situation here. That's certainly a situation that's cause for concern for Queensland and the Queensland coastline, especially for locations between Townsville down towards the Sunshine Coast. I would just like to say that the GFS, whilst it has been calling for a strong tropical cyclone, this is the first time that I've seen a direct hit on, Queens on the Queensland coastline from the GFS forecast, at least from this system here in the last week or so. So take this with a very heavy pinch of salt. The GFS has been very wishy-washy with the forecast. It's been saying a weak system, then it's been saying a strong system, then it's been saying a weak system into Queensland. Now it's saying a strong system into uh, Queensland, and I reckon that that's going to change big time tomorrow. This is definitely a uh, case of watch but don't act at this time. I think the forecast is certainly still very murky, very uh, wishy-washy and certainly is a good opportunity for Queensland to be watching this system but at this time again there is no need to prepare. My hot take on these systems and these forecasts right now is I expect a weak tropical cyclone to develop by the 24th of February somewhere around here south of PNG or the Solomon Islands. What it does from there is very hard to tell. My uh, kind of gut feeling at least with this system is a track uh, through here kind of almost parallel the Queensland coastline, but stuck about 500 nautical miles offshore, well away from the Coral Sea Islands, and that's for sure, before it weakens off down here between New Caledonia and the Queensland area, never making a proper approach to the Queensland coastline. That's my take on it right now, and that's fueled with a lot of uncertainty between the GFS and the Eastern River forecast model. So I would just like to say that uh, right now it's very, very hard to say with what is actually expected with this system. And again, there is just so, so much uncertainty right now uh, in the longer range forecast. If you do live on the Queensland coast, these systems are concerning you or these forecasts are concerning you. A couple of words of advice. Don't act right now. This is certainly a case of watch but don't act. Uh, if you haven't got your cyclone emergency kit ready, especially in Mackay or Townsville, Cairns, that area, it's certainly a good time to prepare one, especially if you're new to the area as well. I mean, cyclones can happen at any time of the year uh, or at any time this uh, time of the year. If you do live south of uh, Mackay, the chances of a tropical cyclone are a lot lower, but you still can receive them and they're not absolutely unheard of down there. Uh, again, it's certainly a case of watch but don't act. Make sure you are staying safe, staying ready for this system and keeping a close eye on the forecast. We'll have definite answers on this by around Thursday or Friday, especially in terms of when it's expected to develop and what the impacts are expected to be along the Queensland coastline. But at this time, the chance for landfill is in single digits. And whilst that is likely to raise over the coming couple of days, it's still a very, very unlikely scenario that Queensland's going to receive a tropical cyclone impact. I just wanted to say that because there are a lot of people that are panicking and also a lot of people that are quite concerned with the state of the forecast community at this time. I'm here to inform and not to panic people. So again, any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section down below, or feel free to send me a private message over on Messenger. I'd be more than happy to help you out over there as well. But yeah, that this is a Coral Sea Tropical Low. That's certainly something worth keeping an eye on as well for Queensland. It's definitely going to have a, quite a few people concerned. Uh, beyond into the long range forecast for Queensland, because you can see in terms of the rainfall forecast, minus the GFS and what the GFS has to say, because that's calling for that direct hit on Queensland here. But you can see in terms of the long range rainfall, forecast. It's not looking too good across the central Queensland coastline. They're in a bit of need of rainfall right now, especially across the southeast, uh, the Sunshine Coast and the Gold Coast. They could do with a couple of hundred millimetres of steady rainfall up there. Far North Queensland, as we know, do not need any more rainfall as well. And they've got about two weeks of some relatively dry conditions. And whilst there will be some good falls across the Cape York Peninsula, in terms of the long range forecast out for the next month or so, there's not an awful lot of rainfall on the cards. We will be entering another wet period beyond about uh, mid to late March. And I reckon into early April, we're certainly going to 
the end uh, for a very wet period across North Queensland, parts of the Northern Territory, and even down in towards Central Queensland as well. The wet will continue through April in terms of the long range forecast, and then in towards late April and early May, I'm expecting wet periods across southeast Queensland and into the northeast of New South Wales. And beyond that, the forecast is a little bit murky. So, a lot more rainfall to come, plenty more tropical cyclones and tropical lows in the Coral Sea as well to come. So, make sure you are staying safe and staying ready for these systems and staying updated by subscribing to the Cyclone Source channel and leaving us a like on Facebook as well. All the support lately has been much appreciated. And I would also like to say a very special thank you for a thousand followers over on Facebook. More on that at the end of this video update. But yeah, in terms of rainfall, not looking too hot across Queensland, New South Wales, and Victoria over the next 14 days. Uh, we'll get to New South Wales, parts of Queensland, and Victoria in just a few moments, but I would just like to touch on the tropical rainfall over in the Northern Territory and parts of Western Australia as well. There's not an awful lot more to come, but there have been some good falls over the last couple of days around the Darwin area into the northern parts of the Northern Territory, and you can see some good thunderstorms currently still firing up up there. Heavy showers and storms in the vicinity of Melville Island. Plenty of showers and thunderstorms over the last three days. Uh, every evening, plenty of rainfall has been reported up there and it has been very good to see. As we all know, Darwin has had a very, very late northern uh, rainfall onset and in fact it came in early February which was disgusting to be honest. I mean they should have had the rainfall a couple of months before so it's going to be a lacklustre wet season across the Northern Territory unfortunately but it is good that they are starting to get a little bit of rainfall right now. And into interior parts of Western Australia, the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Zelia are currently over the top of Lanista or north of Lanista actually inland from Megathara. Again it's causing problems to some of the gravel roads out there. Major flooding reported at Marble Barn into the Degray River is now starting to drop off, which is very good news indeed. I believe the flood levels at Marble Bar peaked about 7 metres above the major flood alerts there. Certainly wasn't a record-breaking flood or anything that caused major damage or devastation across parts of the Pilbara region, but it was very, very extreme, that's for sure. Uh, you might have been seeing the photos as well of the upwelling offshore from Western Australia, and especially in the sea temperatures as well. I can show that on this forecast here. The temperatures of the waters offshore from Port Hedland have taken a bomb, basically 28 degrees off shore from Port Hedland. It's still very warm and certainly enough to sustain a powerful tropical cyclone, but that's in stark contrast to the sea temperatures of 30, uh, 31 pushing 32 degrees, which were uh, what fueled tropical cyclone Zelia's explosive intensification right on the coastline. So tropical cyclone Zelia has taken a lot of energy out of the West Australian waters, which is good to see. But unfortunately for Western Australia, unless they get another tropical cyclone passing through there in the next couple of days, which isn't going to happen, of course, uh, the energy will build up very, very quickly again. Rainfall is now beginning to ease off across interior parts of Western Australia as well. You can see rainfall accumulations will be up to about 50 millimetres over the remainder of today into the Goldfields region adjacent to Kalgoorlie. It doesn't look like Kalgoorlie is going to get too much rainfall, but it certainly could cause some of the mine sites further towards the east, turning into some pretty big puddles or lakes, and moderate falls also extending down to uh, south about towards Esperance. It is also what's driving the couple of warm days that we're seeing around the Perth area. We're looking very forward to this weekend where it's going to be a bit cooler again, the chance of rainfall as well later on this weekend into the southwest corner of Western Australia. But yeah, in terms of the tropical situation for Western Australia and the Northern Territory, that's about all that I have to report on. There's not an awful lot coming through in the next 14 days either. Nothing in the way of tropical low or tropical cyclone activity either for Western Australia. We might see a brief tropical low spin itself up around the uh, 21st towards the 24th of February as well offshore from Western Australia, but the chances of that becoming a tropical cyclone aren't looking too likely, and it's also looking like this system is going to remain very far offshore from the West Australian coastline. You can see there's hardly any model support between the Axis and the GFS. The Eastern World is kind of calling for a tidal low pressure system to wrap itself up but yeah between the other forecast models there's not good support for this tropical up here it still could form but yeah the forecast is still rather uh, uncertain and pretty murky for it and it's as a result of that low pressure system that's situated offshore from the northern territory so that monsoon trough is going to be quite busy providing us with two tropical lows one well offshore from western australia but yeah in terms of the tropical situation for wa in the northern territory that's about all that i have time for today anyways down towards victoria and at new south wales on the grapevine there's been a little bit of rainfall down there which is very good to uh, see and very good to hear as well. They've had a bit of a, th a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak throughout the course of last week across New South Wales and Victoria as well. Working up to some cooler temperatures as well across Victoria, which is going to lead to a couple of uh, fine days across Victoria and New South Wales and some warm days actually coming towards the end of this week through Victoria and into New South Wales as well. You can see those temperatures beginning to climb once again around Thursday. We're expecting daytime maximums into the high 20s for the four Victoria and into the high 30s for parts of New South Wales. Warmer still on Friday temperatures up to the high 30s for New South Wales and mid 30s across parts of Victoria as well. And then Saturday is going to be a warm one. Temperatures up towards 40 degrees across parts of Victoria and then up into the uh, high 30s and early 40s across parts of New South Wales before a cold front sweeps through and provides rainfall accumulations between 5 and 20 millimetres for parts of Victoria and some thunderstorms as well for New South Wales through Sunday too. 
which is very good to see. They do desperately need a little bit of rainfall down there, and you can see on the rainfall accumulations forecast, at least for the next weekend and the next weekend period across four days, we're expecting accumulations widespread between 10 and 25 millimetres. Very, very good to see across parts of New South Wales and Victoria as well, and certainly some rainfall that some agricultural communities can get excited about. In terms of the thunderstorm situation, though, there's not an awful lot to be talking about. Uh, there will be a couple of thunderstorms here and there throughout the course of next weekend, uh, especially Friday night and then again Monday and Tuesday, the 24th and 25th of February, but beyond that the forecast is just a little bit too uncertain to really comment on. We might be seeing a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak happen towards the back couple of days of February there, up around the 27th or the 28th, or even into the first couple of days of March. I'm seeing a little bit of energy here that could be favourable to some thunderstorms across the southeast of Queensland, especially into interior parts across the ranges inland around the Toowoomba area, especially in the first couple of days of March. There could be some good conditions for some thunderstorms and potentially some severe ones there, uh, but we won't be getting too far ahead of ourselves. That's a very long range aspect on the forecast right now and certainly something that we'll need to take a look at in a closer forecast update. But yeah, it's been short and sweet for the Australian weather scene. There's not an awful lot to talk about today apart from that Coral Sea situation. If you've got, again, any questions or comments on that, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. I would be more than happy to help you out. And again, there's plenty of information in regards to that system that's available on the Bureau of Meteorology weather uh, site and also windy.com, which is what I use to make these videos as well. I need to keep uh, reminding people that because it is fantastic software and I strongly recommend everybody using it because it is just amazing stuff and you can make some really good forecasts out of it as well. It's got so much information available. It is really, really good to use, that's for sure. But in terms of other interesting nuggets happening around Australia, that is it. And I'm not going to waste any, uh, any more of your time this morning. So thank you so much for watching the video today. The support lately has been much appreciated. And if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing. A special shout out to all the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, their support is much appreciated. And the list keeps growing and growing and growing as well. We're definitely heading into a, a, a higher uh, energy period, I guess, per se, across parts of Queensland and Western Australia and the Northern Territory. So certainly something to keep in the back of your head as well, especially in towards uh, early April. Plenty of rainfall expected across North Queensland. I know we're getting very far ahead of ourselves with the long range forecast, but that's what it's suggesting at this time. And I do want to take a look more in detail at some long range forecasts in these videos as well. So let me know how you'd receive that in the comment section down below. But that is all for me today. Check out the Facebook and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.